Welcome to another video. Today we're going to explore operations of functions. And, and when we talk about operations of functions, I really want to focus on what happens with the domain. Most people can understand that you can add two functions, subtract two functions, multiply two functions, and divide two functions. It's not that hard. But what happens with the domain is important. You see, sometimes in math, um, it looks like you can cancel out a domain problem. You can never, ever do that. Um, so and, uh, when we talk about domain, we're going to jump right into it here. When we talk about domain, it's one of the most pessimistic attitudes that we have, right? So, so domain is like, uh, like the skeletons in the closet. You can't ever get rid of them. They're always there. Like it carries its baggage with it all the time. So when we start to compose functions or add functions, subtract functions, multiply, divide functions, even if it looks like the domain of your result, your resultant function, is getting better, it's not. What that means is that if we give two functions, the first thing we do is find the domain for each of them. This is very easy because I gave you a nice one that's the same. And then if we add them, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them, we are going to have both of those domain issues in every one of these cases. And then what's even a little bit kind of worse about it is that we can even develop some new domain problems by doing these operations. So that's what we're going to be looking for in this video. I'm going to show you how we can add, subtract, multiply, divide functions. We'll simplify them as much as we possibly can, and then we'll discuss the domain. So let's start right now. Whenever you're going to do operations with functions, whether that's going to be addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or if you're going to start composing functions, the first step that we do is we find the domain for each of our functions individually. Now here, they both got fractions, and after watching last video, you know about fractions. You know that we're looking for inputs that give us a real number defined output, which means for fractions, denominators equaling zero are bad things. We're going to set our denominator equal to zero understanding that when x equals positive two-thirds, that's a problem for us. And it's the same problem for both of these fractions. I gave you the fractions like this uh, with the same denominator so that we can add them and subtract them easy, easily. I'm not trying to teach you that. I'm trying to teach you what happens with the domain here, especially with this case. So here our domain says you're good as long as x cannot equal two-thirds. And sometimes we even abbreviate that and say, hey, x such that x does not equal two-thirds x such that x does not equal two-thirds, implying that all real numbers work except for two-thirds because that would make my denominator equal to zero and that creates an undefined result for that particular input. So that's got to make sense. Two-thirds as an input don't work because your output's undefined. Now, when we start adding functions together, I need you to remember, I need you to know that no matter what we get, this right here is going to be the domain, at least. This right here is going to be in the domain of our resultant function. We could get worse things from it, but we can't ever get rid of these problems. They stick with your functions forever, no matter what you get. Now, typically with uh, addition, subtraction, and, and multiplication, you're going to see the same domain problems come up again at the end. So it's not such a big deal for those, but for this one it is, and we'll see why in a minute. So f plus g of x, if we add these functions together, keep in mind that we need a common denominator to add fractions, and we have that. So we're just combining the numerators right now. That looks like 6x plus 3. over 3x minus 2. Yeah, you can factor the numerator, but it's not going to help you simplify, so I would leave it just like that. Because if we ever have to deal with it later, the first thing we're going to do is probably distribute that numerator. Um, denominators should always be factored, so if not, you should factor that. Now here, we can't do it, but that's something to think about. And, and notice something. Your resultant function here has the same exact denominator, obviously, as what we started with. That means that your domain is going to be the same. Even if these denominators had been different, you would have found a common denominator, wouldn't you have? Which means you'd have the same factors. And those factors equaling zero would cause domain issues for you. So if, even if your denominators are different, you'd find a common denominator, and these things would appear again, whatever they are, in that result. So our domain says, hey,
I'm going to be exactly like how you started. The same thing is going to same. Sorry, I'm going to be exactly the same domain as what you started with for both of your functions combined, whatever those are. Here they were the same. They don't have to be. That'd just be different denominators. Um, f minus g of x is identical, except that we're subtracting. But we're also going to see that when we subtract that 4x over 3x minus 2, I have a 2x minus a 4. Keep in mind, if this had more than one term, I'd want to show parentheses. I'd want to distribute that minus because you'd be subtracting every part of that numerator. <clears throat> and we should know that. So minus 2x or negative 2x plus 3 over 3x minus 2. Again, there's no simplification that we do, and we see that the domain that we had originally is going to be the same domain that we get when we subtract functions. You know what? If you think about it with multiplication, think about what happens when you multiply fractions. Well, you take the denominators and you multiply them together and they they basically become the new denominator for your fraction now if we simplify stuff we can accidentally start simplifying away one of those domain problems but if you think about what happens in the domain I'm gonna have one fraction with the problem on the denominator and another fraction in general problem on the denominator I'm gonna multiply them that becomes my new denominator do you see how I'm just going to keep combining my domain problems for addition and for subtraction and even for multiplication? We're going to get the same domain here moved over to this. That's going to be the same domain as what our, our result is, is what we, uh, we started with. So this 2x plus 3 over 3x minus 2, probably parentheses would be good here. Multiplying fractions says multiply your numerators, we're going to distribute the 4x. Multiply your denominators, we're not going to distribute at all. Your denominators should always be factored as much as possible. So instead of distributing 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2, we leave them factored for a variety of reasons. One of them is because when we graph these things, it's really nice and very appropriate to have your denominator factored. It would create a vertical asymptote. We haven't got there yet, but I've, I said that in the last video. It created a vertical asymptote at 2 uh, thirds, at x equals 2 thirds. It's this, this kind of force field you can't touch. And then because that power is there, because we're going to have this grouped as 3x minus 2 to the second power, it's going to tell us a multiplicity of that. We're going to get to multiplicity later. So we'll distribute numerators, absolutely. So that's going to be 8x squared plus 12x. On the denominator, leave your denominator factored. So I don't care what these things are, whether they're the same or not. You leave them as factors. It's going to really help you with graphing, I promise. And if we ever have to um, add fractions or simplify fractions or multiply them, we can find LCD easier. We can cancel out, simplify easier. We can do everything easier if we leave these factored. Now, because we have 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2, that's a repeated factor. That's repeated multiplication. That's an exponent. That's how I want to see it. And do you see that no matter what, because you're going to keep these factored, you're going to see the same exact denominators that you had here, so the same exact domain issues that you had here, those are going to repeat over here. So our domain doesn't change. Our domain says, yeah, your domain for this is x's such that x cannot equal, again, 2 thirds. I want to reiterate this. I, I know that I haven't taught it to you yet, but you know how I teach at this point. You know that what I'm trying to do is prepare your brains. I'm giving you a, an advanced organizer for later on as to why you do this. Sometimes if you don't know why you do something, it's really hard to accept that you have to. We have to do this and leave it factored and write the exponent because later on, this is going to give us a vertical asymptote on a graph at that value. So a vertical line. x equals a number is a vertical line. If x can't equal that vertical line, well then you have something you can't touch, can you? Do you? Don't you? Can you? One of those. Um, you have something that you can't touch, don't you? Well, if you have something you can't touch, then you have a vertical asymptote, and that power says that you're going to be even. Even functions match up. So we're going to look like this 
or look like this around the asymptote. That's why we leave it that way. I'm going to flesh that out when we get to a few more videos. So long story, as short as I can make it, domain is still really relevant for your functions. We talk about it lots and lots moving forward. Find your domain first. If you have to add, subtract, or multiply functions, you're going to get the same domain almost exclusively. There are times when you don't, but almost exclusively you get that. If you divide, not only are you going to get the same domain, you could add some other issues to that, that domain, the domain problems you already have. The key here, though, is that when you start dividing, it's going to look like you can cancel out some stuff. It's going to look like your domain doesn't have a problem anymore. You still have the problem. It's just hidden. So I said this at the beginning, and it's going to make some sense as we go through, but these issues, this x can't equal two-thirds, that issue, because the resultant function starts here. It, it's, it is these things just wrapped up together. Because these are the, those root, if you will, functions, you can't have that two-thirds. No matter what we get here, I can promise you that our domain is going to exclude two-thirds from it. You know, it's not going to look that way. It's going to look like we cancel it out, but it still has to be there. So when we divide functions, we're really conscious of what goes on the numerator and what goes on the denominator. It says f divided by g. So f is this 2x plus 3 over 3x minus 2. Divided by, you can even write a divided by sign if you want to. 4x over 3x minus 2. Now we know something about complex fractions. We know that fraction divided by fraction when we divide so fraction divided by fraction when we divide fractions we can reciprocate and multiply so instead of this we'll reciprocate the second fraction or the bottom fraction in this case All right, so I have my first fractional problem. Division says multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. And you go, wait a minute. Oh, this is awesome. Because look, boom. Oh, I can cancel out my, de my, de my denominator. I can cancel out my one of those domain problems. It certainly looks that way. It certainly looks that way. But because of where this came from, because your original functions had a domain of negative of two thirds is, is a bad number, so x cannot equal two thirds. We actually write that down first. We, we go through this and go, all right, um, I know x can't equal two thirds, and no matter what happens, x cannot equal two thirds. Even if I start canceling stuff out, I know that where it came from, the baggage it holds onto, the skeleton in the closet that you can't see anymore, is you cannot allow this function equal two thirds based on those root functions, those uh, functions we started with. The other good news here is that you can add some problems to it. So notice our resultant function, that we got that 2x plus 3 over 4x. And you think about it, you go, wait a minute. Wait, that's, that's a fraction with a different denominator than I started with. Yeah. And we know that denominators equaling 0 are bad things. So if we continue to go, all right, let's, let's, find, the, let's find the domain of this. Say, so, well, um, 4x equaling 0 wouldn't be good because that creates an undefined issue for an output, and we know that the domain needs inputs to give us defined real numbers. And I divide by four. Zero divided by four is zero. You go, okay, yeah, hey, x equaling zero would be not a great thing here. We'd get three over zero, that's undefined, so I know that I'm gonna exclude zero. If we ignore this and have that, we do understand dom domain, but we're forgetting to realize where the functions came from. So um, when, when we go ahead and we do division, how to appropriately approach this is find the domain first. When you start dividing, make sure that you write that domain down. You go, okay, whatever these are, you're going to have it here no matter what. And then we might even get additional domain restrictions that we have to add to that. We have to exclude that from the domain. So even though it looks like the, the 3x minus 2 cancels out, it does, but the domain issue is still there based on where we came from. Hope that makes sense. We're going to go ahead and do one more really quick one just to talk about a square root to hit that one more time, and then we'll be done. Okay, last one. So we're going to add these, subtract these, multiply these, and divide these functions, and we're focused on the domain. So really, if you want to stop this 
and go through here. Your first process should be this thing about it. Find your domain first and then recognize that no matter what I do, I'm going to have these two domains in the result of every single one of these uh, function operators and I might even add some to it. So I'm going to have at least what's here and maybe add domain problems as we're doing these operations. So let's let's go ahead. Let's do our do our domain. Oh man, so we think about it last time we're going to think about domain like this for a while. So I look at the square root and I think square roots are this idea that they want to be positive. So it tells you what it wants to be. It says I want this inside this radicand to be positive or at least zero. So we, we think about square roots and say, I need real numbers here. What makes it happen? Makes it happen if the inside is greater than or equal to zero. If not, I get imaginary numbers. That's an issue. I subtract three and it says that I need x to be greater than or equal to negative three in order for this to give me real numbers out. That is the domain of that function. Then we go to denominators right here, this function, g of x. So what, what about denominators? In order for this input, these inputs to give me a real number defined value out, well, it's not about negative or positive, it's about defined values for fractions. We know that if x equals zero, I'm going to have my denominator equal to zero, that's giving me an undefined value, that's gonna be a problem. So any positive is fine here, any negative is here, fine here, but we just cannot allow zero to be an input for that particular function. So we're going to say that, yeah, um, x cannot equal 0. That needs to make sense before we go any further. So when we look at square roots, we think, what's going to give this, or what inputs will make this function give us real number defined outputs? For square roots, you've got to keep them positive, solve it, and these are the numbers that keep it positive and give you real numbers out. For fractions, denominators cannot equal 0, because if they do, you get an undefined value. So square roots positive, denominators can't be 0. These two domains are going to follow us for every single one of these, and we might, we might get some more restrictions out of it. What can't happen? Even if you start canceling stuff out, you are still going to have these. So you never, ever cancel away domain restrictions. So if you wanted to do this right now, say, hey, uh, what's my domain? Well, I know that... That's going to happen. No matter what I get here, I know that because they never go away. Also, do you, do you realize that this is not irrelevant here? We had a case last video where we didn't have to put this because it was, it was included in that. Well, or sorry, it wasn't included in that, that interval. Since this says x can be any number bigger than negative 3 and 0 is in that interval, we have to show explicitly that we're excluding it, either this way or with interval notation, which I showed in the last video. Or we can write it here too, same thing. And that might be a really good option for you to, before you even do any of this, write down the domain. It's not going to change. The only thing is you might have to add some more to it. That could be the case. Well, let's go through adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. The first three are going to go very quickly. So if we add these functions, there's nothing to really combine. So adding function says, hey, you're just going to have that x plus 3. You're going to add 5 over x. And it's very clear to see that that's the, still the same exact domain. Or if you subtract them, same thing. x plus 3 minus 5 over x, same exact domain. Or multiply them. I'd probably put the 5x first. Because multiplication is commutative, we can do that. 5 over x times x plus 3. You can even make it one fraction. 5 times x, square root of x plus 3 over x. And you see that we have the same exact domain. It's not going to change. Now the division. We do have to be conscious of what's coming first because division is not commutative. So we'd have to put the square root of x plus 3 on our numerator. And we'd have to have 5 over x on the denominator. You know, well, wait a minute. When we're when we're dividing fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So so this would be the same thing as the square root of x plus three times x over five times the reciprocal of five over x. So here's x. You can think about square root of x plus three over one. So square root of x plus three over one. 
divided by 5 over x or multiplied by x over 5. You go, this is fantastic. I can simplify this just a little bit. And I do put my x before that square root. That's the resultant function of dividing f by g. We divided square root by a fraction. When you divide fractions, you can multiply by the reciprocal. No problem. We would have x times square root of x plus 3. We'd have over 5. This is one of the reasons why that might be a really good option for you to do first. Do you see it? Do you see how the denominator changed for us? The denominator said, well, there's no longer, there's no longer an x there. So if you were to just do this, and then think about the domain, you're probably going to miss that. Don't miss that. This is why the technique I'm giving you works really, really well. Find the domains first. If you want to write them down for every operation, do that. Even for compositions, uh, that, that sort of works. Um, really, we take the domain of the inside function and the final function, so we, we combine it that way. But for adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, you're always going to get the same domain, no matter what, because we started with that. We don't add anything new, huh? Because well, look at that, the square root hasn't changed. So, so that's still the same domain that we had. The x is gone. It looks like that's gone. The, the problem for x equals 0 is gone. But because of where it came from, we have to retain it. But our, our denominator cannot equal 0 anymore. That right there can't equal 0. So we don't gain any new problems. You still have the same old ones. I hope that makes sense. Hope you understand at this point that your domain does not change from your original functions when you're doing these operators. Um, you can only kind of make it worse if you divide. So practice that. I hope that makes sense. Next time we're going to talk about some graphs of functions, determining if, um, if one input has to be one output, what that looks like graphically. So we'll do something called the vertical line test. You've probably heard about it, but we'll explore why it makes sense. Uh, we'll talk about even versus odd functions and, and some more things like that. So have a great, have a great day, and I hope to see you in the next video.